this is the first of five short follow-on videos from the uh, overview video of how to use X light button control uh, using uh, my chosen method which is RF433 wireless old-fashioned really controls but uh, this won't make any sense any of these unless you check the overview video first watch the overview video and then come back to this as so I've tried to put these into rather than create one long video I've tried to create five videos between five and ten minutes um, to make make it easy to actually go through the videos so this first one as you can see there is part one how to put Tasmotra onto a Sonoff bridge there'll be another one how to build the arcade buttons another one how to configure MQT broker on F on your Falcon Pi player then another one how to set up that Tasmotra that you've installed in part one and then finally which is the bit you'll need those first four parts you'll never do once the fifth part is how to use FPP as a dynamic way of controlling buttons via MQTT and that's the bit really and you could do all that within FPP um, and forget all the rest of it once it's been done that should hopefully make sense particularly if you watch the overview video but so for now I'm going to talk about putting Tasmota onto a Sonoff RF bridge and so the Sonoff RF bridge uh, is quite a small device it's about $15 or something uh, and it, but it's got proprietary software on there for home automation uh, it's from a company uh, that make it under a badge called Sonoff and it's called a Sonoff RF bridge 433 megahertz which is the RF frequency and at that point you can use it you know connecting through to home automation as you bite off the shelf with buttons but what we want to do is to put some open source software on there so we can disconnect it from needing the internet on any kind of uh, proprietor's page um, and basically use the functionality in a better way in my opinion uh, so what we're going to do we're going to install uh, and don't you know everybody uses the word flash we're going to flash this thing now don't be put off by that a lot of people hear oh I'm going to flash Tasmota onto the bridge and they they automatically switch off it's just really flashing what we're talking about is a way of installing different software onto the machine and the way I'm going to show you in this video is actually straightforward it's not hard you don't need to solder all you really need is a bit of patience the first time you do it you'll probably make a mistake but you can do it again and try again it takes usually take two or three attempts maybe but the whole thing's only about 15 20 minute process so don't be put off you'll not destroy the device you'll you'll not do any damage if you fail you just have another go and I so if you watch the video I'm gonna the next part of this is like an eight minute segment and I'm going to walk you through exactly including taking the feet off unscrewing the unscrewing the screws everything is shown so it speeds it up in certain parts but if you watch that probably several times and then have a go yourself you'll it's a lot easier than it sounds so we're going to flash open source task motor onto that piece of hardware and all you need for that is quite a cheap device it's called a FTDI 232 device and it's they're they're about five dollars you can get them off eBay or Amazon and all it is is it converts serial USB to serial so it's USB from a Mac which is where you're going to run a web page and that web page you're going to use to download if you like the software uh, but right but what it does it downloads the software using wires four wires basically you've got a a, a ground wire you've got a voltage a VCC wire which is typically in this case it's 3.3 volts and then you've got two data buttons two data wires transmit and receive and the only quirky thing is on on the wires you reverse them around now you say you don't need to solder them I use DuPont cables which you plug into the uh, serial converter and then push them through holes and you'll see this I so said I'll be put off by this watch the next eight minutes of the video uh, I'll show you exactly how to do it and it's it's a lot simpler than you think uh, and the part of that process to start the process off all you do and again you'll see this in the video later in the video is press the program button before you plug the USB device into your PC or Mac and it's that you know as I say it sounds horrific it's actually straightforward I say watch the video a few times don't panic that it doesn't work when you first try it. just have another go another go typically it takes me probably two or three attempts um, somebody new might take you four or five attempts but it's it's you know if you watch the video enough times you'll probably do it first time 
Either way, let me know in the comments. Uh, I would uh, would be interested to see how many times it takes you. Um, I said, do watch the video. It's not as scary as it sounds. This is just a quick eight minute uh, video tutorial uh, showing how to flash Tasmota onto the latest version of the Sonoff RF bridge. Uh, this is version 2.2, which is current of beginning of uh, 2025. Um, basically, quite cheap but very useful devices for connecting RF transmitters like buttons, switches, and all that kind of good stuff, sensors to uh, MQTT, so you can connect it to use for home automation or you know, including things like Falcon Pi Player for X lights multitude of uses um, and so in this video I'm just going to show you how to flash the thing so basically take it apart it's easy as you can see take it apart tape it to the desk just to uh, make life a little bit easier and you can see the pins we're trying to get to there 3.3 volts transmit receive and ground so it's just power and then transmit receive and we're going to connect it to a a, a just a flashing device quite cheap just a few dollars uh, this is the thing and again the pinouts on that are as you can see RX transmit 3.3 it's labeled as VCC but it's 3.3 volts and ground set the pin to 3.3 volts as you can see the, the jumper then connect up again in this case just make sure you're the one you get again these are on a few dollars just make sure you can see the writing on there but I've got their ground then VCC which is 3.3 volts and then transmit and then receive and then at the other end we're going to reverse the transmit and receive the power on the ground stay ground for ground power for power but the transmit receiver the same way around so they can talk to each other basically we're going to use a computer to flash the thing and all you need is dupont things they don't you don't solder them in or use particular wires they'll just push through the holes and they will actually stay in place so that's me putting ground in then uh, as i said reverse transmit and receive and then finally, the VCC. At this point, there's no power to it anyhow, but you wouldn't, you, I doubt you'd, I've never damaged one. I've done a few of these now uh, over the years. So that's all, it's all done. I say you don't need to soldier them in. They just, uh, they'll just all there and they will actually connect. Every time I've used them, they've been fine. The device there say, make sure the jumper's across the 3.3 volts, as you can see there, and that you've connected it up the right way around. You've got VCC and ground the right way around. And then you've got USB cord. It's a micro... Uh, sorry, a mini USB that connects back to the PC. But before you plug it in, you've got to press the button on the side here to put it into like flash mode. So you push it all in, plug in your USB onto your PC, and then give it a couple of seconds, and then you can release. And then at that point, it's in flash mode. Then go to your browser, and you can go to tasmota.github.io slash install. Then click on the connect and you should see that if it's all worked you should see that serial port there just connect to that and then install tasmota we're going to erase the stocks on our flashware flashware software click on install and then it'll go into install and if, if it's connected at this point you'll it'll do it for a few seconds and it's a you can see it's working it's erasing the old stock so software on the thing and then it's installing tasmota uh, by the way while it's doing this do go and uh, Click on the link to give the Tasmota guys a, a coffee or whatever it is, you know, by PayPal, because uh, they're doing a fantastic open source project and it's been running for years, but it'd be good to keep them going. Because as you'll see later on in other videos, this is extremely user friendly and extremely useful for home automation or things like Falcon Pi Player. When it's finished, you just click on next. It'll take you back to the beginning. Ignore that. Just click on the cross because it's finished. It's just one, if you want to do a second one. At that point, you use your phone, uh, best way, to connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot. And you can see there's one there. It'll be called Tasmota something. Connect to that. doesn't need a password. It'll connect, but it says no internet connection. And generally, it'll go through. If it doesn't go through, go to that 192.168.4.1. At that point, you're actually into Tasmota on the device. Uh, you can then click on the Wi-Fi network. I've selected... The one I use here, it's virus IoT to, to keep my nosy neighbours from going onto it. I'm not going to show you the password. I'll just put it in, put the password in and click on save. And at that point, rather than being a hotspot, it will then connect to your Wi-Fi network. It'll show it's connecting and usually, not always, it'll show you the actual IP address that's on your network. So you can see there, mine's 
.20.53. Yours is going to be different. If it doesn't show that, just go on your router and you'll find it. Then go to a browser and on the browser, just put that IP address in. And what we're going to do now is configure it. So we'll click on configuration and we're going to tell it that it's not a, a Sonoff basic. It's actually a, uh, a module called uh, a bridge. So don't be fooled and go for the one that says Sonoff RF. That's something completely different. Scroll down until you actually see one that says Sonoff bridge. Click on that. And then it'll download the soft, it'll configure itself as a bridge. So click on save. And at that point now, the, it takes a few seconds, but just click on save. And it'll then set itself up and reboot. It only takes a few seconds. This is actually in live time. So it's actually, as you can see, it's, it's, it's really quick. Uh, and then you know it's works. It says at the top, Sonoff bridge. And also it's got the 16 virtual keys for the RF transmitters. So you could pair, as I'll show you in another one, you can pair 16 RF transmitters with this quite easily. If you go back into Wi-Fi network, then what I do is, final thing I do is set the host name to be something more meaningful. So I'm going to call it, you can call it what you want, but I'm going to call it RF bridge in this case. You could just call it RF1 or whatever you wanted. And then just click on save. And at that point, it's more or less finished. So in the later videos, I'll actually show you how to actually, uh, so we've configured Tasmotor on this device and it's all good to go. You can say you can check it all out and then put the board back in its thing. Cause at that point, you know, it's all worked, just pops back in and then the lid just goes, or the base really goes back on and just tighten the screws up again and, and you know, just then at that point, power it from a five volt supply. So any five volt USB connected to a, uh, connects into it and then check it again. And then once you're totally happy with it, go back to that web page, make sure you can get back onto the TAS motor. Uh, and then once you're happy, just stick the feet back on. So again, just put the feet back in and, and it's then good to go. And I say in later tutorials, I'll actually show you how to use it for connecting to Falcon Pi Player, Home Automation, anything that has an MQTT. It's, a, it's an absolute brilliant device. And these things, these things are dirt cheap. Uh, I forgot, it's about $15 or something. But they, they've got a good range and the, you can, the software is absolutely amazing, as you will see in later tutorials. So, uh, yeah, and then the final thing is just to peel off the sticky. <laughs> but, yeah, these, this, as I'll show you, the only downside to this is you've got to get the right RF transmitters, uh, and but there's loads and loads of them, and I will explain that in, in a separate video. And that that is basically it for the flashing. So I'll see you in later videos.